Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a little series to build this quadcopter. Now, about a year ago, but pretty much a year to the day, I actually built this one on the channel. This is pretty much all SpeedyB components. It is a SpeedyB frame, SpeedyB flight controller stack, SpeedyB ESC, uh, walks down system in there. That time I used Team Motor Motors and had a fantastic time building it. It was a pretty traditional five inch quad. This time I want to deviate a little bit from that standard formula. And for me, I would like seven, eight and 10 inch quads because typically particularly the seven and eight inch, you get an awful lot more efficiency from those larger props spinning a little bit more slowly. Now I have tried seven inch builds in the past on the channel, but excitingly, I did recently get this frame in here. This is the Armitan frame that I looked at a week or two ago. This is the one that I'm going to use. This is available in the five and seven inch arms. I've got the seven inch arm version, and that was the starting point for me thinking, you know what? I'm actually going to do another build. Let's have a play. Let's build a seven inch Explorer class with a different flight controller, different ESC setup, so we can try and show some different things. Gonna stick walks down in it, of course, but it means that I've got a different frame, flight controller, ESC, different setups, different set of building challenges. I know a few of you out there have been in touch with me wanting to build seven inch quads. So this is a great opportunity to kind of go through my thought process. Now I'll put links down below to the entire series. So if you want to kind of blast the way through this, you can go and have a look. I'm not going to go into super level of detail. The previous build that I did in the channel was really aimed at beginners and I'm keeping those of you that have never built a seven inch quad in mind. However, I would go and watch that first series first. If you've never made a quadcopter before, it's probably easier now to build a quad than it's ever been in the entire history of the hobby. Everything is pretty much built to standards and just kind of bolts together. But this time I am going a little bit off piste in terms of the flight controller. I haven't used the GBS Lucid, which I'll talk about in a minute in a quad like this. I've actually used it in a plane, but that's a whole nother thing. And I've also not used their new AM32 based four in one ESC stack. And that also gives me the opportunity to have an AM32 based quad that we can also do things like show how to reverse motors and things like that too. Because again, that isn't necessarily something that I've had to do before. So let me go through all these components that I've chosen for this build. I've got everything in, the frame came for review, the flight controller stack came for a review but I've been out and I've actually ordered all the other parts myself. So this is one of those things that I'm not 100% sure that everything is gonna work. However, hopefully you can be along for the ride and find out with me. First thing to talk about then is what flight controller software am I going to run on this? Most quads tend to be installed with Betaflight unless you want some more sophisticated mission planning and GPS functions and the ability to park it in 3D space. And as actually I want all those things, I'm not gonna be using Betaflight. I am going to use iNav. Now in the build, depending on how this goes and when this was filmed, it might be iNav 7.1.2, it might be iNav 8. We'll have a go. If I end up doing, I'm doing the build in iNav 7.1.2, I'll almost certainly flash it to fly it on iNav 8 by the end of the series. Well, fingers crossed, I'm recording this before I started everything. iNav will allow me to not only fly the quad in the normal conventional ways, but it will crucially allow me to do things like position hold, where it'll just sit in the air. It'll also allow me to fly missions if I want to fly autonomously and get points in 3D space and have the quad do that. And also it has a super reliable return to home. It's many, many times superior to the GPS rescue function in beta flight, particularly if you have a compass set up and installed. So that's what I'm gonna do here. The frame is an Armatan Nutria frame. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. Again, this is the one that I looked at a week or two ago. This is available in both five and seven inch versions. There's easily enough room here for the flight controller stack that I'm thinking of using. HDFPV system at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I maybe have to redesign the tail so that I can put the GPS out here at the back and also have room for the various antennas for the HDFPV system, but also the, for the receiver too. So we might end up having a bit of a play designing and 3D printing a part for the back. If I do that, I'll share it. The flight controller stack is going to be the TBS Lucid Pro that I looked at recently. That has the MPU 6000 gyro, which is the one I want to use here. It has a slightly unusual flight 
control a CPU. This is an F435 based CPU and it has loads of different ports. It has one port for ESC telemetry, UART3 is for DJI L3A unit, UART4 is set for an S bus input, UART5 is set for CRSF and they actually have the pins here at the top for that, UART7 is set for a GPS and UART8 is set for a smart audio output. Now this is designed not only to work with analog systems but also with HD FPV so that's perfect for what I want here that's going to be using this cable at the side and it also has the GPS pads that I need with the compass support for the I squared C pins so that is going to allow me to have an external compass which is going to allow iNav to work brilliantly even in windier conditions. This flight controller only weighs about 4.51 grams. At the bottom of this stack is the AM32 base 4-in-1 ESC. This is the one that's designed to be paired with this, again Lucid branded, 50 amps maximum. It will support 60 amps for up to 300 seconds or 70 amps for about a minute. 3 to 6S LiPo supported and probably noticed it has this kind of funky stuff around it. This is the gorilla mount system that TBS has come up with. However, the frame that I want to use, the Armatan, Nutria frame, it has only the standard mounting. So I'm having to use these brackets here so that it will fit in that frame without a problem. The extra brackets are only about $4. I will go through the weights of all of these components in a moment. In terms of the GPS and the receiver, I don't really have anything particularly exotic that I want to use there. The flight controller is designed to have both an S-Bus and a CRSF connection, so Express LRS, Crossfire, or whatever. So I'm not really too worried about that. I'm sure I've got something that I can use. But in terms of the GPS, I'm almost certainly going to use a modern M10 based GPS with an external compass in it as well. But again, to actually mount that, I'm probably going to have to 3D design something to go here at the back of the quad. The motors and props are the area that I've probably put the most thought into. Those of us that do quite a bit of quad building will have the go-to ones that we like to use for the standard 5-inch setups. And we'll have one that we like for 4S and one that we like for 6S. Usually the same motor in different KVs. This is going to be a 7S model. So I've put a little bit of thought into this and had to do a little bit of research on what modern 7 inches will fly. Historically, I was kind of guesstimating, but now 7 inch models are much more popular. It's much more easier to find the thrust tables and the motors that you want. So I have opted for the Emax Eco 2 series 20. 807 motors. These are 1,700 kV. Uh, it's nice to actually have some Emacs motors in here. I actually ordered these from Unman Tech here in the UK. They were about £15 a piece. So they're not the lightest 2807 motors in this category, but they do offer quite a bit of bang for the buck. I really like T-Motor and that's what I tended to use. But when I was looking around, lots of people were talking about how well these things worked, particularly on 7-inch. So that's what I've gone for. In terms of the props, I have gone for Gemfan Flash 7042 props in black. These ones were ordered from here in the UK from Hobby RC, about £5 for a set of four. And hopefully together, these are going to work fine. Why do I think they're going to work fine? Well, after I read all the stuff in the forums, I kind of did my homework. And lots of places have the thrust table for these motors with these props. And using these numbers, I can just see what kind of amp draw and what kind of thrust I'm going to get out of this configuration. So if I just jump on this, we can have a look. So you can see here that this thrust table is for the 16 volt or 4S battery setup, which is what I want to use this on, because if I can get the amp draw low enough, I'd like to try it with lithium ion. And on this one, it's showing that for 300 grams of thrust, it's pulling about 3.3 amps with an efficiency of 541 grams per watt. And to do that, it's using two bladed props. I really like two bladed props because in all of the stuff that I did with Marcus from the eCalc website, he was very good at helping explain that the more props you have, the more losses you have at the tip of each of those props. And all the endurance stuff that I've always built has always been twin props. So it's great to see that there's a prop choice here that actually only has the two blades. 
Now, by weighing all the components here, and we'll go through that in a minute, I reckon that this thing's going to weigh about 700 grams by the time that I've built it out. That means that each motor only has to produce 175 grams to hover, and probably slightly less for forward flight. That means that the 300 grams that this is showing, pulling about 3.3 amps, it's not going to be anywhere near that to keep this thing in the air if I can keep it at that 700 gram weight. So hopefully we're more about the 2.4, 2.7 amps per motor. We'll have to fly it and see. Ideally, that would mean that all four motors together would give me about 10 amps maximum. And if I could get less than 10 amps, then lithium ion might be an option. But again, we'll have to see. So how much did all of this stuff cost? How much would it cost if you wanted to follow along with this particular build? Well, very quickly, I did a post-it note calculation. The frame's about £95. Flight controller is about £40. ESC is about £43. Motors, four of them, they're about £15, £16 each. Let's call it £64 for those. The props are a fiver. Receiver is about £10. GPS is about £15. The walk snail unit is going to be £150. So the quad itself is going to be about £273. Then there's the walk snail unit, which is about £150 on top of that. That means all up, it's about £423. That's not including the battery. In terms of the weight, I'd like to get all the components in, have a rough idea, but I've actually weighed everything as well, and this is how I've got to 700 grams. The frame is 206 grams, the flight controller with ESC is 28, the motors are 55 grams each, so that's about 220 grams for the set of four. Props are 22 grams, receiver in GPS are going to be four or five grams each. The walk snail system is 28 grams, and the battery that I want to use is 157 grams. Now on top of that, we also need to add some miscellaneous stuff for things like the power connector to the battery and the XT60 connector, auxiliary cables, and other bits and bobs that we're gonna put on the frame. Let's say 30 grams for that, and that magically comes out to almost exactly 700 grams. It'll be interesting to see how close I get to that when this thing is all put together. So join me in this series where I'm going to go through all the steps and we'll see how all this works. I have heard in the past of some walk snail issues with this Lucid Pro flight controller from TBS. TBS assure me that those are all resolved. So we'll find all of this out as we go through. Again, this is one of those builds where I'm not using it as one of those ooh, follow along because it absolutely always works. Check out last year's series if you want that. This is more a bit of an adventure and a bit of fun putting all this stuff together, seeing if we can get it fly and flying well. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.